Greetings theists and non-theists, I am the Atheist Paladin. I am going back to Crazy 316. Um, in the course of our exchange of our videos, uh, he seems to uh, have the idea that the, somehow the Old Testament laws do not apply anymore, and this is simply wrong. He seems to think uh, he is, which is kind of strange, because he lauds, you know, the health laws and things, and then he sort of backhandedly mentions that they somehow don't apply anymore, um, which is strictly false. If you look at the words used describing those statutes and how long they last, the word is olam. And that means forever. Um, you know, don't eat blood or fat, that's forever. Uh, that the uh, priests are, uh, are gone from the Ammonites, or not the Ammonites, but from Aaron and his sons, the Levites. That's to be a statute forever. Um, keeping the Sabbaths is a statute forever, not just the, the weekly Sabbath, but the holy days to which God prescribes is to be forever for all their generations. Just look this word up and you'll see this word used in conjunction uh, with statutes and commandments a whole lot. And, these, and this shall be a statute for perpetuity or this shall be an everlasting statue, and you'll see that a lot in the Old Testament, Partic particularly in the Pentateuch, of course. And what God is trying to drive home the most is that in Deuteronomy, he says, if you do not follow these commandments and his statutes, then you'll get blessings and everything will be hunky-dory, you'll conquer your enemies, your land will be fruitful, but if you don't, all these curses will follow you. So God is driving at home that everything, even the statutes, the things that Moses prescribed, is to last forever for all their generations. So this is kind of a peculiar uh, wording uh, that God is using. It's kind of funny that, oh, uh, yeah, the Messiah's here, now these no longer apply, but kind of strange wording there. I mean, if God meant for it to end at the cross, then why didn't he put that provision there? Like, until the Messiah comes, or, you know, some sort of, or until the Anointed One comes. Some, some Something like that to uh, say, okay, now they know it, it ends here. But that doesn't happen. And you're supposed to kill anybody who says otherwise, pretty much that the sphinx against the laws of God, and God curses them for it. So, uh, the Old Testament, that doesn't help you. So what about the New Testament? The New Testament seems to apply that a lot, but mm, not quite. Let's go to the New Testament as well, and we'll see uh, what exactly is uh, permitted and not. So let's go to Matthew 5, 17 through 19. Uh, you should be familiar with this by now, crazy. Think that I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets, but I have, I have not come but to fulfill. Verily I say to you, till the earth, to heavens and earth pass away, not one jolt, not one tittle, likewise shall pass from the law till it all be fulfilled. Whoever shall break one of these commandments, whoever break one of these shall, shall and teach men also shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, which is, other words, everybody heaven saying, you're scum. And whoever shall teaches them and doeth the same shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. So, other words, you'll be a hero. So, what Jesus is saying that, uh, no, nope, the laws aren't going anywhere, which is kind of, which is kind of, kind of strange way of saying it. If these laws are to death pass away, that's in kind of a strong wording of saying it will not pass away. So they will try to say, I have not come to destroy the law, but I have come to destroy the law. They try to place that fulfill with meaning somehow to make it obsolete, which is no different from saying destroying the law. So that doesn't fly. Um, one of the situations where uh, I see Christians a lot citing that uh, Jesus has done away with these laws is uh, Mark 7. 
but that isn't the case. If we read into Mark 7, verses 1 through 15, shall give you the gist of the story. But it's about the disciples not washing the hands, and Jesus is getting in an argument with the Pharisees. But if you actually read the uh, commentaries on this verse, washing your hands is not a statute of the law. It's a tradition of the elders. It even says it um, in these verses. And if you see these verses that the the commentary says, even in the uh, the verses themselves, the Pharisees make these um, sort of back loops or tradi other traditions that you don't have to honor your father or mother um, and so they make these you know loopholes in the way you have you can get out of it through gifts or whatever so as you can see they're not honoring the law so Jesus is not trying to do away with the law he's pointing out their hypocrisy and trying to make their own traditions in order to place the traditions of men so this doesn't really break um, or get away with getting away with the law. Another one Christians like to cite is Colossians uh, 2 14 verses 17. Let's read it. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that were against us that were contrary to us took it out of the way nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled these principalities and powers and made slew, slew them over and try and triumphing over them. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink in respect of holy day of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, to which these are shadows of things to come, but is the body of Christ. Which is very interesting. That sounds very interesting though, doesn't it? And as you see, if we look at let no man judge you in meat or drink. It sounds like he's actually getting rid, rid of the dietary laws. But it says, it continues on, in respect of the holy day or of the new moon of the Sabbath days. Well, there's just more than the weekly Sabbath, so there's the holy days. So it is actually making references to the ordinances about the, the feasts that occur on holy days. So there's actually a whole lot of regulations of what you should do or how you should celebrate the holy day and so and therefore you shall make a portion of this and you cut that and it has all these ordinances. So as what Paul's saying is it doesn't matter where you follow these holy days or not. These were the shadow of Christ. What do Christians say about Jesus? They say Jesus is the Passover lamb. Or maybe Jesus is the means of atonement, like the uh, escape goat on Yom Kippur. So this is what Paul is saying. Jesus was merely a shadow of, it, of this. So he's not getting rid of the law, he's getting rid of just the importance of following the holy days. So as we can see, um, you are still not to eat your pork. Uh, you're still not to eat shrimp. And most importantly, you're still not to be gay. And these things are in perpetuity. So crazy saying that um, the law doesn't apply. Oh yes, it still does. It's not your means of salvation, as Paul points out as many times. But it's still something that you should follow, that you should still remain righteous. Um, I'm pretty sure he'll have a lot of things. This is just a small summary of my arguments against uh, this sort of thing. Um, there's a lot more we can cover. I know he'll probably say something about particular passages in Acts, which I can completely pawn him on. Um, so there, there are there, there are many things that. So this is just a small section, admittedly. So I can't go into very in depth about every passage that seems to say the law is no more or this would just simply be a long video series so until then see you next time guys